Hey everyone, it's me, Arthur Cade, welcoming Kevin Carroll, who plays John Murphy on season two of The Leftovers, one of my favorite shows. It's a great interview, so check it out. Hey everyone, it's me, Arthur Caden. Kevin Carroll, just telling you, man, such an enormous fan of what you're doing on The Leftovers this season. One of my favorite shows. I told you, you were keeping me up last night. Uh, I don't want to give away spoilers. Right. You don't even know what happens to you. I know what happens to you. Right, right, <laughs> right, right. Well, I'm excited to see season four so I can catch up with what happens to me. Have you seen any of it yet? No, I mean, we've seen as much as everybody else has seen. So and you're three episodes in right Yeah, I'm now. three episodes in, and it's the weirdest thing in the world because, you know, you do this stuff, we been working since March. So, you know, we get the scripts, they come down, we do what we can, we, we send it into the can, and then we see it 10 months later. And I am just as excited as, uh, as you know, hopefully our viewers are. Here is she. I've given up on Damon telling us what's happening with the department. I've given up. I just want to know. I want to know what's Me going too. on with the characters and you and Regina, the whole Murphy right. family. It really is a fascinating term because in season one, it obviously we see the Mapleton scene and we see everything focusing on Justin and his family. Mm -hmm. But now you guys have been thrown into the mix. And with John Murphy, we're sh I'm still trying to figure out what's going on there. So as an actor, talk to me about bringing that to life. Um, luckily for me that, uh, you know, we have thinkers like Damon and the whole writer's room and Tom Parada. And I think the challenge of the work is to be open to the process. And by that, I mean, you know, Damon doesn't, not only does he not tell you guys what's happening, <laughs> but he doesn't tell us what's happening either. So we get the scripts and, uh, you know, with a little time to work on them. And there's a trust factor that happens, which is, in that you sort of give as much as you can bring uh, or whatever you can find, you, you, you bring that to the table and you know that the work, the level of work in itself and the team that we have it, collectively, you're gonna get quality, uh, you're gonna get a quality product coming back. So it makes it great because what you're responsible to is bringing as much as you can to the table and then you let the process take over. And that's a different kind of trust, if you know what I mean. I uh, came from a theater, so I'm, you know, I've been well versed in being, having a little more uh, say so in the performance and in the process itself. Not so much sending it away and waiting you know, seven, eight months to get it back, you see? So that's new, it's different, it's a completely different way to work, but uh, you know, HBO's great, Damon, the writers, uh, we have a, 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 an amazing crew that works extremely hard. So when you see it all comes come come together, it's like a gift in a way. I would literally show up at Damon's trailer. Yes. I would bribe him. I'd be like, dude, whatever you want, just tell me. What the departures, like, tell me everything. You know what? I would bribe you <laughs> to bribe Damon to do that, to get something out of him. Uh, you know, Damon's magical in a way that he gives actors and he gives you just enough. Like, you don't get a lot of extra meat on the bone. You get just enough. And initially, I didn't understand it. But later on, I, because of the way the storytelling happens, there's so many uh, intricate details of it that as an actor, if you get too much information, you can, want, you can tend to play a lot, play too much in, or um, overthink it. Um, but when you scale back and you dial into just the information that you have and you bring what you can to that, then there's another part of the process that happens where, uh, the writing team can feed off of it. They can lead. You can give and take in in the in what the actor's doing, or you can wait and see what the writers come up with and follow it. But if you have a lot of information, I think you can tend to overplay moments. You can tend to tip the hat one way or another way. And a great way to 
make sure that we don't do that is not to tell you <laughs> who, what's happening so you don't Se give anything secrets right. work is yes, what you're saying yes, yes. This, this. but we don't know moment, to moment like i didn't know uh before we started talking like what the questions were i didn't know what you were going to say had i known i may have prepared something in a different way but uh, you know as it stands now we're walking a tightrope together, right? You know what's scary? This I don't like even know what the show. questions are. See, there, there it is. But see, I this ad lib like everything. <laughs> but this is like the show now. Now we're like the show because I have no idea. You have no idea, but we're finding it. John Murphy, man, this guy, yeah. I, you know, the, we first see him. He's kind of a bad guy, but you, you can tell he has good intentions. Okay. But he's doing bad things. Okay. Now we're starting I to mean, see the right? I mean, but, but, well, you know, it's 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 a weird mix there, right? Right, right. I mean, you look at the why. You look at the why, and sometimes you have to wait for the entirety of the why. But when you, but this is a challenge of of the leftovers. You have to look at some of this and remain open for information to be filled in before you come up with where you stand on some of the some of the things that happen in the show. But you know, if you're a fan of Damon Lindelof, if you're a fan of HBO and uh, of the team, then you you know you're gonna get a fair shake at at some degree of understanding somewhere. You gotta trust the storyteller. Except if it's Jon Snow, where everybody's yeah, like well, waiting to see what happens. Yeah, 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 yeah that's true. You, well, you, get, that's true. You, you get to work with one of the best. I mean, she just won an Emmy, Regina King, you know, and you're in close proximity, husband and wife. Listen, what, what's it like with her? Regina is one of these artists that, you know, because she's the total package, I mean, she directs, she's an actress, uh, she's a visionary. Um, it's it's a gift to see her work. And, you know, I've been around the block long enough to know that when people wear multiple hats, sometimes what happens is if you have an actor that also directs, they start to try to direct while they're acting. She's amazing in that she's able to separate. She's able to be an actress when it's time to be an actress. And then she can also you know, pull you out of a spot if you need to be pulled out of a spot directorially, uh, if asked. Um, and, uh, and, and then a, she has a total awareness of the way the process goes. So, you know, she has ability to, unlike me, who, you know, I'm liable to bump into a boom mic at any point, you know, at any point during the process. She, uh, she, she, she will adjust. If I'm standing in the wrong spot that's not really working, you'll see her slide over, and I'm thinking, what is she doing? And then you figure out, oh, I was, I was in her spot. I was in a light, and she adjusted for camera so we didn't have to stop, and we're still rolling. And she really makes it easy in, in the fundamental ways, but also as a scene partner. She's always present. And she has a similar degree of strength, an incredible amount of strength in the role, an incredible amount of sensitivity in the role. And to see all of that put together, you just wonder, like, Jesus, why why is there only one Emmy? You know what I'm saying? Like, why is there only one Emmy around this lady? Like, she's, she's tells great. Me it's not the last. Uh, yeah, I got a feeling you're right. You've got I another relationship on the show. It's a bromance going on right now with Justin Theroux's character. It's it's fascinating because I'm watching, you know, I don't want to mm -hmm. give too much away because people mm -hmm. haven't seen episode four yet and this might air before them. But right. it, I, I feel like the two of them see a lot of each other in each other, right? I absolutely agree. And and one of the beautiful parts of, of where we see this bromance lead to is that uh, is a partnering of sorts and and they definitely do the do the dance and you know not everybody gets along all the time in a romance bromance whatever kind of romance whatever kind of man you have nothing is uh without its complexity and uh complications so you know what you see starting to happen or start to happen plays itself out in a very interesting way you mentioned you came from theater. Talk mm -hmm. to me about how did this opportunity come up and were you a fan of the show beforehand? I, for me, uh, generally following series at nights have always been tough because, you know, you're doing you're show, performing, you're performing sure. at night. So getting on board with shows, sometimes I, you know, I've been able to dip in and dip out of a lot of shows, but to really get on board and follow, that's, that's difficult because I work mostly at night on stage. Um, and to the end, 
uh, when this came about, it was, I happened to be in LA at the time and there's a casting director in the city, uh, Vicki Thomas, whom I've known for years and I've auditioned for everything for her <laughs> and, and it just hadn't worked out before. So she ironically, uh, a couple of years ago, cast me in a play. So we had done the, I had done, the, I'd done that play and, uh, had a chance to, you know, change sort of management and agents and all this stuff, all the boring stuff. I hate to keep <laughs> people talking about it, but it's it's what happened. So I changed changed the team around me, and so this came up. I went in for her, and I got to tell you, Vicky in the room was, I mean, you know, she read every part, and you would think that we were on the show. She was incredibly committed to the reading in the room, which made it so much easier to sort of channel and live in the room. And I'm so grateful for her for that because it really challenged me in the room to stay on my toes and gave me a chance to live as much as I could with the role while I was auditioning, which is always a great gift. So just plain old fashioned auditioning is how it came about. So one of the things that blows my mind is as a viewer, in recent history, I can't think of more intense shows to watch. I mean, this isn't a comical show. This is you're focused and the characters are constantly in this moment of intensity, strained faces and anger and mm -hmm. so much emotion. As an actor, what's it like filming that? Um, you know, we are lucky in that it's a shared weight if you if you understand what I mean. I mean, I I don't I think everybody in the process uh, it costs everybody something. I think the writer's room, you know, when I think about them, I think about, you know, a bunch of writers and them banging their heads against the wall and like going to like tormenting themselves to have to, and, and bloodletting to put some of the stuff on, on paper. So when it comes to us, I think there's a similar responsibility and uh, a part of the weight that we share, which is to embody the things that the writers have found and gutted themselves to put down on paper a lot of times. And the great, the greatest gift in when you're doing intense work, the greatest gift you can have is to have a willing company that also where no player, uh, it, it takes a day off. Everybody shows up and brings their a game. And when it's time to go deep, you never feel like you're going deep alone. Right. You know, Mimi leader as a director, she's as deep as you, you know, she's in it with you, you know. Um, and so you have, you know, Justin is, you know, the, the, the lead of our show. And, you know, he's he's emotionally as available as as they come. So uh, when you're surrounded by, you know, Carrie Coon, Justin, uh, Regina and you know our newcomers to the show and everybody's willing to invest it makes it not easy but it makes it rewarding because you feel uh, you, you feel like what the writers have given you to work with uh, everybody's fully investigated that you know so I you know our younger our younger actors on the show Javon Adipo and Jasmine Foy Brown they too, they're not, nobody's looking for an easy way out on the show. You show up, you know what the work is, and everybody goes deep. And so you go deep together. The only complaint is HBO. I'm an HBO fanatic. They, I got to binge watch your show. Like, Listen, I'm going nuts right now, man. I, I'm, I, I'm ready. Right. I, I mean, I'm so ready for the, episode five. This is what I'm saying. So the bribing you were going to do with Damon, you can try it on HBO gonna, if you can. You know, I got to send Michael I, Lombardo. Please, I, please give me access passwords. Hey, man, congratulations again. You're phenomenal on the show, and it's oh, really man. been a fun season. And that opening theme music is classic, hey, too. I love that. Is.